G'day everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I fillet redfin and how I prefer to cook them my favourite way. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Cooking! Now the camera angle is really dodgy. I don't know how this is going to come out. In fact if you look up there, that's the legs of the tripod. I've got my tripod on the bench and I've got my camera pointing straight down. Anyway, hopefully this comes out alright. Hopefully I can teach you how I like to fillet redfin and cook redfin. Let's get started. Rightio, now there are lots of different ways to fillet redfin. This is just one way, and this is the easiest way. It's probably not the best way, and it's probably not the most practical way, but I think it's the easiest way. So if you've landed on this video because you've searched for how to fillet perch, or how to fillet redfin, hopefully this will show you the easiest way, the way that I find easiest, and then you can uh, modify that as you go. I've got five redfin here. They're not big, but they're big enough for a feed. Now this is only a small filleting board. I actually threw out my regular wooden filleting board the other day. It was a bit manky. I need to get another one. And normally I do this on the sink, but because of camera reasons, I'm doing it on the bench. These aren't big fish, but they're big enough to get a fillet out of. Right, this is the easiest way. The most common way is people will cut in around there, cut along the back, then cut around the ribs. But that's a bit more complicated. So the easiest way I find is to just cut the head off. Now, I like to have two knives. I've got a short sharp knife and a long sharp knife. That's the uh, for skinning and getting the bones out later. I've got a bowl over here where I'm going to throw all my scraps. Then at the end I'll put them in a, uh, a supermarket bag and I'll throw them in the, in the freezer. And either they'll go out on bin day or I'll use them as yabby bait. So, I've cut the head off. If you look down here now, you can see there, there's the backbone. I want to cut each side off. So I dig my knife in behind the backbone. Now, with these smaller fish like this, I prefer to just cut straight through the bones. I am cutting straight through the rib cage there. You can see me cutting through. With bigger fish, it's harder to do this and you need to learn how to carve around the bones. But with these smaller fish, I find it's easiest just to run your knife along that backbone. There's the backbone there and take the whole side of the fish off. Now I'll do the same this side. I can see the backbone, so I'll dig my knife in under there and I'll just run that along sort of pointing the knife, angling it up a little bit towards the backbone. And what that should mean now, what I've got now is two fillets. There's the backbone, and you can see it's very, very thin because I've taken most of the meat off. That goes in my scraps bucket over there. Now I've got my two fillets. You can see along here, they're the, they're the bones, they're the, the rib cage. There's also a lot of bones around the bottoms of all the fins. So if I turn that over, I will then cut this fin, that fin, and all of the gills off at once. So I'll put my knife in under there. And that cuts all that off at once. That's all gone. I will cut around this bone up this fin at the back here. Because they have little bones at the bottom of the fins that dig into the flesh. You can even cut right along the top there a little bit if you need to, just to get rid of any bones that may have been coming in from that, uh, that top dorsal fin. So now all that's left on this fillet is the rib cage bones, and that's where my long knife comes in handy. I'll get in under there, and I'll cut them out. You can, if you're not confident, if, you, if you're not confident that you've got all the bones, if you look here you'll see there's the rib cage, there's all the bones. Oh, sorry, there it is there. That's the rib cage. I'll throw that in the bin. If you're not confident that you've got all the meat out, you can just cut straight across there. You'll lose quite a bit of meat, but you're guaranteed to get all of the uh, the bones out. Then I get my fingernail and I just pin it down there on the very edge of the, the skin. And I get my long knife. And it's nice and flexible, this knife. This is a Dexter knife. I've got this off Brent, Brent Ibram at uh, My Slice of Life in Wangaratta. And I just run that along there separating the meat from the skin and there's my there's my fresh fillet you see that that's my redfin fillet i've been put that on the plate there's the skin you can make a handbag or a purse out of that or you can just throw it in the bin now i'll do the same with this one here i'll cut under there getting rid of these all these front fins put that in the scraps turn that over Get rid of the rib cage. There's the rib cage gone. Skin the fillet.
And once again, there's my fillet, ready to go. Now I'll do another one, it's a little bit smaller. I won't talk through this one, I'll just butcher straight into it and you can just watch what I do. Right, now there's two down, three to go. I'll turn the camera off while I fill up the other three, and then I'm gonna show you how I like to prepare them to cook them. Right, now I've just finished cleaning my redfin. I filleted all of them. I've got a mess to clean up. But before I do, here's my fillets. I'm gonna wash them under the tap, run the water over them, wash off any excess scales and stuff that may be on them. Then I'll, in the interest of food safety, I'll put them in the fridge while I clean up the bench, and then I'll move on to the cooking part. But before I do that, just a couple of shout outs. Big shout out to Brent Ibram from My Slice of Life in Wangratta for giving me this knife. Gee whiz, it must be 13 or 14 years ago now when he very first started. He was working at Felix's Butchery at the time and he hadn't even opened his own shop and he was selling knives on the side and he gave me that one and I've had it ever since. Big shout out for Brent from My Slice of Life. You can find him on Instagram and Facebook. And also a big shout out to Aiden from Brown Snake Blades who made me this knife and sent it through to my mail time segment only a few months ago. It is an absolute ripper of a knife. It does a fantastic job. Thanks Aiden. Brown Snake Blades. Check them out on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. Right. Now I'll clean up and I'll put these fish in the fridge, clean up, then get ready to start cooking. Right, I'll finish cleaning up. Now it's time to prepare the fish fillets for cooking. And to do that, I'm going to do them in egg and breadcrumbs. I've got two types of breadcrumbs I can use here. I've got some herb and garlic ones, which I've never used. And I've just got some plain crummies. Crummies or herb and garlic. Which one will I do? I might go the herb and garlic and see how they go. Right, now what I've got to do is I've got to crack a couple of eggs into a bowl. Actually, I'll do that over here on the sink, just off camera. Rightio. I'll uh, get me fork and I'll uh, whisk them up and make them all into like a just a consistent yellow fluid. I'll get my crummies. Oh, my herb and garlic crumbs. They actually smell nice. And I'll uh, put some crumbs on the plate like that. You see that? There's a big mound of crumbs. Now I'll get my fish out of the fridge. There's the fish fillet. See they're nice and clean. I gave them a good wash under the water before. Right now I'll get one fillet. Dip it into the egg. Fully immerse it in the egg. Make sure it gets completely wet with egg. Like I said, some people like to go into flour first. I don't really worry. I just go straight from the egg into the breadcrumbs. And this, these breadcrumbs will get lumpy after a while because I'm handling them with wet fingers because of the egg and also because they just, they just do. They get, they get lumpy, but that's okay. So there's one crumbed redfin fillet ready to go. That goes over here onto the finished product plate. I'll do the next one. You'll notice how I'm demonstrating how to fill up the fish and how to crumb the fish with the biggest of the fish. That's because it's just a little bit less embarrassing. <laughs> They weren't really big fish. One good thing about redfin, there's no size limits, no bag limits. You can keep as many as you want. The minimum size of a redfin is dictated by how good your filleting skills are. And there is two crumbed fish fillets ready to fry. Now I'll do the rest of them. And there you go, folks. There's the finished product. Ten breadcrumbed redfin fillets ready to throw in the frying pan. Now what I'm going to do, I'll put them in the fridge for a few minutes while I clean up. I like to clean up as I go. I'll wash all these dishes now and dry them and put them away. That way when I sit down to enjoy my redfin, I don't have to look at all the dirty dishes on the bench and know that I've got a heap of work ahead of me afterwards. So I clean up as I go so that I can just enjoy the fruits of my fishing experience right at the end. Now remember what I said earlier, I'm not a very good cook, but I like to have lots of margarine in there. I like to cook a little bit of uh, redfin with my margarine, if you know what I mean. The more the better. Now that's up full bore. Because this particular fish, redfin, are small and skinny, they'll cook very quickly. So 
You can cook them high or you can cook them low. It won't really make too much difference. I like to cook them low so that I don't burn the crumbs. Now that's uh, getting right nice and warm. That's what I'll do. I'll turn that right down to a low heat. Be careful I'm not putting too much heat up on my camera here. Right. That's nice and low now. So I'll chuck my biggest fillets in, naturally. And I'll turn them up a little bit. It's a little bit too low, I think. And they'll cook like that. I don't know, probably any... I don't really know how to tell when it's cooked. When it looks cooked, I reckon, is a good way to tell when it's cooked. Right, now you'll see that's just sizzling away nicely there. I can crank it up a lot hotter, but I find if you have it too hot, you burn the crumbs and you end up with like burnt outsides. So I just like to have it down nice and low until I reckon it's about halfway cooked through. If I look around the edges here, I can see the whitening of the flesh under the crumbs there. So it's already cooking quite well. And I'll turn that over shortly. Now, how's that looking underneath? That's looking pretty bloody good to me. I'm calling that done. Have a look at that. Magnificent. A couple of nice redfin fillets. Coated in some herb and garlic breadcrumbs. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some more marge in before the next bits. Now, if you're not sure what to have with your fish, with your red fin, you might want to have salad or, or chips. Personally, I think the best thing that you can have as a side to your red fin is more red fin. <laughs> there we go, folks. Have a look at that. Absolutely magnificent. I'll eat a bit and tell you what it's like. Honestly, folks, that tastes even better than it looks. That is simply superb. Rightio, folks, I've taught you how to fill it and how to cook redfin the way I do it. As I said at the start of the video, there's plenty of different ways to do this. This is just my favourite way. Now, I'm going to uh, leave you all and I'm going to go and enjoy my lunch. Current time is 12.28, right on lunchtime. Couldn't think of a better way to have lunch. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've learned a few things from this video. If you have, give it a big fat thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.